that someday the call they will answer To play for the place they were born Pat Collins, father of Patrick and Joe Collins, involved in the All Ireland Senior Hurling Final in a few days' time. Uh, you must be a very proud man. Yes, indeed. It's a great occasion for myself and my family. It is something. It is a dream come true, really, for any infant to, or for anybody to have anybody involved in an All Ireland. It is a dream come true. When there were young lads growing up, Pat. Um, did you ever envisage this day happening? No, but it is always a dream that you love to have. It is everybody's dream to, to their progress to make a county, make a club, make a county. And a little bit of luck to win in Ireland. So hopefully they're on the road. How did it all start like? Uh, it all started from in the backyard of a house. Everybody has a backyard. On any fair few minutes at all I live, I, put them out in the backyard and we'll go for a game between studies and school and any chance we got for a spare time we had all these annoyance and they loved it and they never threw them away and did the whole family take part in it? yeah as you know I have five children and they all played they all wore the red jersey so they, they love the whole thing the house is, is just massive really and they just love it and did mother take part in the matches as well? Not really, no. She was only a spectator. She couldn't take, she couldn't take the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, while we're talking about mother, um, does she go to the matches? She does, yeah. She goes to inter-county matches. She doesn't go to the club games. Maybe county final, maybe or something like that. But uh, inter-county games, she go to most of the market. And what she worry about the lads now if yeah, they were she, injured or anything? She would be just afraid that they'd make a mistake or something like that, but you know, those things are all over our hands when they're on the field and uh, they just play their own game and we live and play their own game and we, you know, sometimes we might be discussing things went wrong or whatever, but that's all part of the sport on the field. Your, your own part then, would you be offering any advice or any criticism? Not anymore, no. Um, there was a time when I was involved with him, I gave him plenty of advice and I have my part and I think this fellow is in better positions now than knows better than I do. Um, so they can be advised in the way I want to leave matters. And would you go to all their games then? I would. Every game I, if I can go to every game I will go to, as long as I'm alive. That's my plan. I know. That I go and I'll enjoy a game, to take a part of the country to be, I'll be one. And of course there are two other stars in the family as well then. Um, yeah. Three actually. Three, uh, yeah. Um, sure, Michael and Katrina. And that's who they all play for Cork. Michael and Katrina have two all Ireland intermediate medals. Uh, Katrina an all star. She played at Cork Camogies for a good number of years. Matthew played as a young fella, he played with Cork Miners. Cock under 21s, cock intermediates, and then he moved to Dublin. And uh, the two boys, they all started at a very young age. They all played primary game at county, and uh, they walked on from there. And the two boys are still playing, thank God. So they're, they're at the peak at the moment, noticed. Fairly intense at the moment now. When the lads are training, past, would, would they do some of their training at home as well as the training they're doing with the car panel? Yeah, I was very lucky. Um, back two years ago, there, I put a bit of a gym in my house, and the lads made fair shoot suited there for the last year and a half. They don't miss a, year, a day training. If they don't match with the county, they do it themselves at home. And, and we're lucky that we have that facility in our house, that they have the opportunity to go out and do their own exercise and do the makes life easy for them. And what kind of stuff would they be doing then, like outside of the hauling part of it? Now, what kind of maybe, physical stuff? Maybe a lot of. Uh, Body strength. I have one for the other. I see him pulling, doing chin ups and off a door frame. He had 20 kgs hanging off him as well as his own weight. And uh, they train fierce out. Fierce out. And they do 365 days a year. 
They were doing it Christmas Day, same day, day, New Year's Day. Every day was the same to them. They were doing that bit. So at least they're getting a reward for the efforts they put in. And they are where they deserve to be because they don't put in a savage effort. Yeah, and people watching matches don't realise. Absolutely yeah, not. It's, it's, it's almost professional. It's, it's, it's probably the same as professional. Right? Well, not alone, not alone for the boys, but I think on the house as well, the, mall, the woman in the house, she will have a lot of washing through, I can tell you. Yeah. And those things have to be done. People don't see it, people don't even talk about it. Yeah. But it is effective life and it is. It goes with the territory. If you have five boys playing sport, it is hard work in the house. And a lot of things to be considered in those circumstances. And you know, as, as Balanhasi people and the Balanhasi person myself, we are very proud of you and we are very proud of those lads. Like, and um, we'd be living every puck with, with Patrick and, 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 and Joe as well if he gets to do his part. We'll be watching well, every step they take on Sunday week. John is hoping that he won't get to show it on Sunday because if it was, there'd be something around the other fellas. So he'd be quite happy to sit in the stand and, uh, and do his bit if he's called. He'd be, he'd be there to do his bit and he'd leave, he won't leave anyone down, I can tell him. Your, your own part then, would you be offering any advice or any criticism? Not anymore, no. Um, there was a time when I was involved with him, I gave him plenty of advice and I have my part and I think this fellow is in better positions now than knows better than I do. Um, so they can be advised in the way I want to leave matters. And would you go to all their games then? I would. Every game I, if I can go to every game, I will go to as long as I'm alive. That's my plan. You know? That I go and I'll enjoy a game. To take my part of the country to be, I'll be one. And of course, there are two other stars in the family as well then. Um, yeah. Three actually. Three, uh, yeah. Um, sure. Michael and Katrina. And that should they all pay for Cork. Michael and Katrina have two all and intermediate medals. Uh, Katrina Van Alster, she played at Cork Camogies for a good number of years. Matthew played as a young flea, he played with Cork Miners, Cork Under 21s, Cork Intermediates, and then he moved to Dublin. And uh, the two boys, they all started at a very young age, they all played primary game at County, and uh, they worked on from there, and the two boys are still playing, thank God. So they're, they're at the peak at the moment, noticed. Just to finish off there, Pat, what, what are your wishes for the lads for uh, Sunday week? Oh, a win without a doubt. Um, we hope they play well and do themselves justice on the field. It won't be easy, but the lads will give their best and they won't go they won't on without a fight. They won't be found wanting. They won't be found wanting, that's for sure. Listen, thanks very much for taking the time to come no down problem. and talk to us. A pleasure. And yeah. The best look on uh, Sunday week. No? Thanks very much. I'm here with three members of the Collins family uh, Matthew, Katrina, and Michael. Um, they're proud brothers and sister of Patrick and Ger, who will be playing on Sunday week in Co Park, and no doubt they'll be giving, giving them their full support. Um, when you were growing up, was there much hurling and camogie done up in Rare Hall? Uh, I suppose I'll take that one first. On. Um, yeah, I suppose there was. It was uh, something that was done every day, really. You come home from school and uh, generally the, the youngest person went in goal. So that's kind of how it started. Um, and then you would have had neighbours that would have joined in, birthday parties and all that. Uh, yeah, so it would have been uh, with a big, big lawn above Burr Hill. Um, and then you would have had, that would have continued on coming out to the club then with likes of Benji Khan, Don Lumbert, Michael Cooney Senior and all those kind of um, started us off training when we were younger but it would have started at home definitely um, between all of us and the youngest person would have been gone. Uh, well I know Dad, Pat would have taken part but would Mum have taken part or? Um, would she? I'd say she just got more hit in the head with the, with the scissors, yeah. giving us calls from the kitchen more than anything else. Um, yeah, like as Matt just said, it was all we knew, like we used to come home from school, throw the bags into the garden and out to go into the garden. So every so often then you get a reward from from mum at the kitchen to come in. Uh, other than that, she, uh, she had more sense and she kept well away from the from the pitch itself. And these family matches, was there any dust-ups in them? 
Ah no, we all we get on very well, so there's no fear of that. But uh, like 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 the lads were saying there, it's um, I suppose it was always the case that we were playing way at home and that. But no, I suppose it was the case that when we were younger, Dad would have been involved in say t our teams growing up, and so there was an interest there. We were all kind of going to each other's matches and that, so it was great. And then I suppose the lads kind of started falling into goal. Then Joe at home, as they were saying, that the youngest lad kind of always went in goal. Um, and then on our kind of teams, as we were going up along, Patrick would have played in goal in my team, say. And then Joe would have played in goal for Patrick's team, so that's kind of how Dick Johnny would have fell into goal that way then, you know. And um, Katrina, you've been the only girl and, and, and four boys there. Mm. Um, how did you go about asserting yourself? Uh, well, it was kind of sink or swim, really. It was a case of kill or be killed, so you just have to kind of get stuck in, and that, and that was it. So I ended up being uh, a forward and let the rest of them in second goal. Um, but yeah, it was just get get stuck in and they didn't treat me any differently, uh, which might be a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, but I came out with just as many bruises as they did and I think it, it stood to me in the long run. <laughs> How is kind of day-to-day -day living with uh, the two lads? Um, do we talk about the matches? Do we criticise them if they need to be criticised? Do we praise them? What happens in a family like where there's so many people involved in sport like that? Um, to be fair, like we kind of just keep it kind of low key enough at home. Um, I suppose any kind of any kind of where they go, they kind of probably get a lot of attention when people try to talk to them about it, about the games and that. So I suppose at home it's important that we kind of just just keep it low key enough. Don't really like wish them all the best and say well done when they come in the door after, but kind of keep it low profile enough about it because so you know, they need a bit of a break from it as well. It's very you know, they train very hard, but there's no point in them coming home then talking about training and reflecting on everything the whole time. So. It's important that we kind of give them that bit of space and a bit of a break as well from it. Matthew, in four or five sentences, could you uh, tell me a bit about Joe, what kind of a person he is and stuff? Oh, um, uh, Joe is an unbelievably hard working person. Um, he's very, very diligent. Uh, when he puts his mind to something, and he'll go about his business quietly. Uh, if you interrupt that or if you interrupt what he wants to do, he won't be long telling you about it. Um, he's good with his hands, uh, he's into hurley repairs, um, he works in the construction industry, uh, he's a final year student in CIT, um, and that's probably him at the moment. Uh, when he's in your corner, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll defend you to the hilt, um, and he's a good brother to have. Good man. Which one of you is going to tell me about the other fellow? I forget his name again. <laughs> um, she's heard just going part. He's uh, fairly laid back. He's relaxed. Um, so he's as cool as a breeze. To be fair to him, um, which is a great way to have it. But I suppose like that, he's extremely hard working. Kind of goes about his business um, without any kind of fuss. To be fair. So, um, but like that, he's so he's so to be fair to me, he's good. To people like so he'd be sound out he's there's no fear of him that he's so he gives like you didn't see after games that he'd take time to talk to the young fellas and that um which is a great trait to have in a fella but Joe he doesn't get too Joe he doesn't get too high with the highs or he doesn't get too low with the lows which is kind of very important in the position that they're in but um but like that he's hard working he's very diligent with his you know his training with his like his tra in training college at the moment to the guard in the guards so um so he's good folks from at the moment so he's working hard at that as well but like that hard work and you know, he's fairly laid back to be fair to him. Yeah. Katrina, a big question for you. Which one of them is your favourite? Oh gosh, well Me. I can't <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to say one of these for the national kill Um I'll go no, I suppose you can't you can't have a favourite. George is my godchild, so I suppose I have a, a soft spot for him. <laughs> but uh, no, I would not think as Mike said earlier, we all got him very, very well. Um, we, you know, there's a big, well, I wouldn't say too big of an age gap between Matthew and Jared, but they get on just as well as, as me and Michael in the middle. So, um, no, I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly pick. I'd never be allowed into the house again if I picked one and not the other. So, uh, I love them all equally. <laughs> well, of all of the four and all, if you had to cry in someone's shoulder, who would it be? Who she wouldn't reach any shoulder, yes, that's a few more minutes. Um, who would it be? Out of Partick and Jared? Yeah. Uh, I suppose Jared. Uh, well, not, not that Partick wouldn't, but 
Um, Ger is an incredibly big heart. You won't meet anybody uh, with a bigger heart than him, and he um, would do anything for you. So um, I think if I if I was in trouble or if I needed uh, a help in anything, as uh, even though he's much younger than I am, um, he he would probably be my go-to. <laughs> go, go. go. What, what are their other interests, the, la the lads? Low uh, Island. Low Island. If you were if you were, trying, <laughs> if you were trying to make contact with them any night in the last couple of weeks, uh, you're wasting your time between nine o'clock and ten a.m. because Low Island is on. So yeah, uh, that's their that's their go-to. Oh, yeah. they, they don't even come in and, and go for a shower and change the gear oh, after training. It's straight into the sitting room, uh, TV on, cup of tea in the hand, and Love Island is on, and they have to wait until ten o'clock to go for their shower. So. Um, they'll kill us now for saying it, but love it. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, have you any message for them for Sunday week? No, I suppose just that we're incredibly proud of you know, not only the fact that they've got to our but all the hard work that they put in from when they were young, to be fair to them, that you know, it's, we've all like, been supporting them since they were so small young for going away, I think, playing, say, Cork games or club games, or whatever, and you know, they're all immensely proud of them. Um, so they're taking their straight to be fair to them, so it's great. It's, it'd be hard for us sometimes sitting in the stands watching them, but um, to know that they're so relaxed, they put in so much hard work, and just that we're like that incredibly proud of them and all that they've achieved so far, and just to wish the best of luck in the game. Brilliant. Listen, thanks a million, folks, for coming down and doing these chats. Dolly Coleman is here with me, very proud chairman of Ballinhasig GA Club. Um, son of one of the greats of Cork Hauling, Martin. Um, Derry, uh, big couple of weeks for the club. Massive, massive couple of weeks. Um, it's, I suppose it's very unusual for a club to have two goalies and one panel. Um, no, it's, it's a very proud day for the club altogether. Um, we just hope as many of us can go up and see it as possible. And hoping the best best outcome on the day for the two lads. Um, the whole club is behind them. They've they're wonderful ambassadors for our club. Um, anything we ever ask them to do or anything to get involved underage, they never hesitate. Great young fellas and a great family as well to be honest. When did you first become aware of um, the capabilities of these two lads? Ah oh, sure. Coming up I suppose from, from under twelve we kind of knew, knew about all the lads. They were all all goalies and we'd be kind of keeping an eye open goalies anyway all the time around in this club. And uh ah, sure. From from when they picked up a hurry really. It was it was obvious that they were due due for great things. Uh is it fair to ask you? The the, the boss man himself, Martin. Yeah. Well what's his take on these fellas? Oh he'd be critical of everyone, but uh he's very impressed. He's very impressed with the lads now. Especially Patrick the other day he was you know, when the chips were down, he, he really he really showed his stuff. Of course, there is a, another very important member of the club um, involved uh, in the minor, yep. and that's uh, Dara O'Sullivan. Yeah. Um, could you say a few words about him? Or? Oh, Dara, yeah. From a, another very prominent Balhasig uh, family. Um, Dara, got to know him there in the last couple of years since, since I got involved in a pleasure to deal with, lovely young fella, and a, and a credit to his, to his parents really. Um, you know, every time you're down here, he's down here pucking the ball. Um, fierce, dedicated young fella, and hoping, hoping for the best for him as well next week. In general, Derry, um, how's the club going? There's a lot of very good development around the place. Um, oh, the club, the club is. Um, I suppose we were. We're kind of rebuilding it all, but things are things are coming together nicely. We have a nice few young fellas coming up, and obviously the two lads on the court panel and Dara is a great boost. And things things are very positive for the club at the moment. Um, it is a great boost to have two court senior players in any club, obviously, and to have another man on the minor team who was man of the match the other day is, you know, for a small country club. We can't ask for more really and uh, we're blessed really to have who we have and all the mentors you know these fellas don't appear overnight they have to be brought up and taught and trained properly and it's it's a credit to the club really and to everyone involved um we're just we're just delighted and hoping for the best really and 
hoping for good days ahead for all of us. With so many things around for young people to do nowadays, some of them not very sensible or very attractive. I said the GA plays a very important part, doesn't it? Massive. Um, it's like uh, just I'm involved now with the underage as well, and there's there's a few fathers involved with me who are new to the parish, and they were amazed when they came into the parish. They, they say no, like if you ever want to get involved in a parish, get involved in your local GA club, and that's how you'll meet people, and you'll fall straight in. Within six months, it'll be like you lived here all your life. Um, it's it's brilliant, and especially our biggest aim really is to keep young fellas playing for as long as we can and give them as many games as we can, um, and try and have the best facilities we can for them, so we can keep them here as long as they have, and hopefully they'll enjoy it. I'm going to put you on the spot now, would you? Just um, deliver a good wish message to the three lads. Oh, lads, um, best of luck in your games coming up. Um, we know you can do it and you deep down know you can do it as well and uh, the whole club is behind you and best of luck and hopefully we'll be having many happy nights back here welcoming Cups back and that's about it really. Very good Derry, thanks very much for taking the time to come down Cheers, and continued success to Ballinhassie GA Club as well. Thanks very much Ali. John Paul Griffin, uh, chairperson of the underage section Ballinhassie GA Club down with me here now for a, a small chat. Uh, John Paul, very important weekend for the club and three players, either current underage or former underage players. Um, would you like to say a few words to me about Dara O'Sullivan and his value to the club? Yeah, Ali, it's, uh, as you say, it's, um, it's a huge occasion for, for the club um, to have three players involved in all Ireland, in all Ireland minor and all Ireland senior. Um, Finals is it's a big occasion for any club, particularly for a club of our size. You know we wouldn't have a massive uh, playing population, so I like to, you know, to have those three lads involved. It's 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 massive and it's it's huge pride for the for the parish, um, and for the club in particular. Um, just to speak individually about the lads, um, Dara. I suppose Dara. The one of the key things for Dara is that he's he's very humble. He's very hard working. Um, you know you can ask him like Dara from the age of fourteen or fifteen particularly there in terms of goal games with the young underage lads, if you need Dara to, to get involved in a refereeing game, he'd be more than happy to help us out. And that's the culture that we've always had the underage, that, that lads, you know, when you get to that, those teenage years, you come back and help out the underage, and Dara has always been very strong to help us that way, as all our, all our lads are at that age are. Um, I suppose just as regards his, I suppose his achievement so far in, in you know, winning a Munster title at minor, at minor level, I mean, that, that's... That's a special uh, achievement alone, ever before in our Ireland, you know, for what he's done. It's um, and that's down to his own initial, uh, first and foremost. It's down to his own hard work. It's down to the support of his family, um, and obviously then it's it's you know just the underage plays a little part of that as well. You know, and he, all his underage coaches and you know have played a, have played a huge part in that. You know, people kind of forget. You know, you know when you get to that level where you're winning the the medals, that all starts down at the, at the lower age groups, five and six with your mentors and. They can't be forgotten about, and and it's a special occasion for those mentors as well. Seeing seeing Dara running out on, on, in Central Stadium that are in final, and um, and as well, just I mentioned to all his teammates all along as well who supported Dara. You know, you know, feeling those teams, getting them, you know, playing a part in in his development as a player. So yeah, it's um, yeah, look, he's he's a fabulous young fella, and he's a credit to his family and uh, he's a credit to our club. Yeah, you're right in what you said there. If you don't have an underage club, a viable underage club, you don't have an adult club, like. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it is, it is it's, it's very important, the underage. Um, and look, at it, it, our, our key philosophy here is that, first and foremost, that fellas come down and they, they enjoy it and they love coming down here. They're part of a, of a culture whereby it's all about game time for players here and having fun, bringing them through to adult level. Like, if we see a player here at six years of age and he's involved at, at under 18, moving into junior hurling, it doesn't matter about, like, it's not all about top teams here or intermediate, prim intermediate. It's about bringing a player all the way through that he, he, he gets involved in playing at adult and maybe then after that he might come in as part of a, a committee here or helping out be it grounds or running the club, secretary. You know, that's, that, that's the key aim here as part of, a, of our culture in Balmasic. Yeah, of course, there's so many pitfalls now for young people, much tougher now than when I was a young fellow about 30 years ago. <coughs> <laughs> 
Uh, do you, would you have had much interaction then with the, the two Collins brothers, uh, Patrick and Jor? I suppose from a, from a coaching perspective, I would have had just Patrick at the tail end. I was involved with a, a minor hurling team. Um, actually, John O'Sullivan would be Dara's father. He would have been the, the manager and coach at the time, so I would have been a selector with John. So it would have been uh, Patrick's uh, last year at minor. So um, from that point of view, I suppose, look, look, both Patrick and Jor, they were all the special talents coming through at, at underage. Uh, you could see that, you know, from, from day one. I mean, these lads were, you know, when, when when teams are short of players at an older age group, the lads were stepping up to help fill that void, you know, and you could see, look, they were always special talents. Um, like Patrick, that this was at minor, that was my first time seeing him, but in terms of, of being involved with the team, and yeah, look, he was, like, he was exceptional. He was exceptional in goal and he was exceptional outfield. Like, this was one game in particular would have been we would have played uh, Erog in a, in a minor, a minor semi final, it was actually. And he scored 314, I think 314 or 315 was what he scored. Like, so I think that tells you the level of talent that he has. And obviously Jor as well has that has that that exceptional skill level as well. You know, beating goal our outfield, both lads have contributed, have always contributed up through underage and into the adult club now, as we can see in Premier Intermediate. So again, it's it's down to again, it's down to just that that conveyor of, of players coming through. If you're getting to that level, obviously you have that dedication that's above and beyond most club players and you have to have that and not, it's not just the skill level it's always it's the commitment it's the dedication to better yourself all the time and you could see that with Patrick and, and Joe like they were always they were always going to uh, make that great because they had that dedication you know so yeah no they're, they're, it's, it's, it's great to see it it's great to see the, the level of success we do get uh, um, in this club so hopefully it will continue Look, that's that's very good. That's that's a great insight, and that's kind of what I wanted to know and what people will want to hear. Um, would you like to extend the best wishes of the underage club to the three lads for the weekend? I would indeed. Yeah, I, I um, oh, look, it's we're so proud of, of the lads here and um, to to what they've achieved and to see them on the open and, and in Central Stadium and in Crow Park. It's it's a massive occasion for a club, and we wish them all the best of luck. And we wish our families the best of luck as well, you know, the, and extended families. It's a huge occasion for the O'Sullivan's and the Collinses. So, um, look, we're delighted and we'll be supporting them all the way. And hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully we'll see some silverware back in the parish in, in the next couple of weeks. Great, John Paul. Thanks very much for giving us your time and your insight into the thing. And um, we're all hoping for the same result at the weekend. <laughs> Hope it goes right anyway. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Thanks Wonder indeed. Groups. Thanks indeed. So three cheers for the lads, Patrick, Joe and Dara. Hey Pep! Hey! Hey Pep! Hey! Hey Pep! Hey! Come on lads, stick up the holly, no big cheer.